glad you've... Uh, oh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you've had a chance to look at the slide. Um, I'm the middle person there. Um, and uh, the uh, Roland you heard from uh, earlier sit, sitting over there, and if I say anything that isn't quite right, no doubt he'll, he'll correct me. <laughs> so um, um, <clears throat> I'll tell you about how the, the three authors of this presentation uh, uh, happen to, to become the three authors um, as, as we go through. Uh, first of all, where, where is Carn Glass? Well, um, you've been shown a map of the Black Isle, just north of Inverness, uh, um, earlier. If you uh, come up from Inverness, which is down here up the, the A9, uh, is this road here, you'll come to the famous Tor Roundabout, which if you want to go anywhere in the Highlands beyond Inverness, you are bound to go round. And um, so take the uh, Dingwall Road, uh, eventually goes over to Ullapool, and um, just uh, about a couple of miles up uh, up the road there, and it is up, because you, you uh, go uphill, and the spine of the Black Isle, called the Mulbui, um, it runs sort of uh, bottom left to top right um, across, uh, across there. And current glass is just off the, the main road uh, along, uh, along here. The, the history of current glass is a bit enigmatic, to put it, uh, uh, to put it mildly. Um, how it got the name, I have no idea. It's the uh, first, first record that I've found um, of, of it is on the first series map, where what was previously on all other maps just called Cairn, uh, suddenly became Cairn Glass. And I, I, I know of no written record that actually says it's Cairn Glass. It talks about the Cairns in uh, the uh, in, in the Mobui, and I brought up uh, here some um, uh, some of the where some of the other cairns are. There's two here, there's two there, and we'll see them in some photographs later. Uh, two further over here in the famous cairn on them um, uh, up there. So there's a little kind of landscape of of Neolithic Bronze Age cairns in uh, in in this area. But current glass appears uh, um, under that name in, on the first series, 1872. And there is a report of, uh, by Angus Beaton in, uh, I think it's in the SAS, um, dated 1881. And he describes it as a big mound of stones and tells you it's 100 foot up and 21, 25 foot high, uh, or whatever stone. So it would have looked something uh, like that. That is not a photograph of it. Uh, <coughs> but, um, I think it's an Irish one, that one. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Karen Glass would have looked something like that in 1881. The, the first um, uh, known excavation was uh, carried out by this guy, uh, Lord John Abercrombie, in 1906. And he describes it without any stones. He opened up uh, the chamber. There were some remnant stones, I think, in, in the chamber. So all that pile of stones had disappeared between about 1880 and early 1900s. Now we know that the local estate, uh, Kilcoy Castle, had a new uh, pathway, uh, driveway, uh, built around about that time, so the suspicion is an awful lot of them are under there. Uh, but also there was a lot of land drainage, so a lot of them are underground uh, um, as uh, uh, stone, uh, stone drains. So, but anyway, by the time John Abercrombie got there, then uh, uh, they had virtually all gone, and uh, he found um, a few bits and pieces. Clearly, the, the uh, cairn had been robbed in uh, the millennia beforehand, uh, but he did, interestingly enough, uh, find a, um, a, a barbantined uh, uh, arrowhead and a few bits of beaker pot pottery. Uh, Abercrombie apparently was the first person to actually use the term beaker pottery, so he is. Uh, kind of interesting and uh, important in, in that respect. There's no written paper uh, by, of, of that excavation. These, uh, these artifacts were given to the National Museum uh, by his daughter when he died in 1927 or something, uh, something like that. <laughs> the, uh, there was a, a full excavation carried out by uh, Dr. Tony Woodham over two summers. And, uh, 55 and 56, and he also um, discovered a few artifacts, uh, again, a bit more beaker pottery, but he dug a bit further down, 
and uh, the, this um, leaf-shaped um, um, arrowhead indicating Neolithic and quite a lot of bits of Neolithic pottery where uh, any uh, um, decoration was clearly done by thumbnails and <coughs> uh, like that rather than um, beaker pottery from, uh, from the Bronze Age. So this is a, a cairn that was clearly Neolithic but reused um, during, the, uh, during the Bronze Age. Tony Woodham also, interestingly, um, found this, the quernstone. Um, it's not recorded in, his, in, the, in uh, either of the two papers he wrote about Carn uh, Glass because he didn't actually know where it came from. It was, he found it uh, in the sort of stones that had been put back in by Abercrombie. Uh, and he suggests it might, uh, um, it might have been part of the roof structure, but because he, he wasn't sure it was part of this, where it had come from, he, uh, he doesn't record it in, it in the, the archaeological uh, literature, but it's in the National Museum now. Uh, he gave it uh, to them and uh, is, uh, uh, is, is well do documented there. Okay, um, after 1956, uh, Tony Woodham didn't backfill Carn Glass. He left it um, as, uh, as it was. Um, this Unfortunately, this photograph is a little bit misleading because you keep getting drawn to this. This is just a very heavy shadow of the side stones um, down the, the side of the chamber. So this is taken from the sort of passageway into the chamber to the headstone. Uh, and it's just the, the, the very uh, black shadow. Um, obviously taken in one of these rare days when we see the sun up the black arm. Um, in 1970, that was taken at the end of his excavation, how he left it in 1956. It was scheduled in 1971 uh, as a ritual funerary chamber, uh, chamber care. Now I come into this uh, um, uh, project in 2008 because I was writing a book on the parish of, of uh, um, well, Red Castle, Calerno, and um, Carn Glass I, I knew about, um, so I went to look at it. I uh, tore a pair of trousers to just get in, uh, uh, to the bottom because it was completely surrounded in several strands of barbed wire, and, went, and even when I got over that, um, I ruined a woolly jumper uh, just getting in it because uh, Carn Glass is in there. It was totally covered in 10 foot high gorse and dangerous operation just to crawl your way um, in. And when I got there, um, this is a photograph of what I, I discovered. Um, I, and we'll see this stone, there's one lying on its side. Um, you can just see it in Tony Woodham's uh, picture there. And I thought that was it. I thought that was the headstone and it had fallen, so I took a photograph of it, published it in my book as the as, uh, Chamber of Carn Glass. Anyway, um, I complained to Historic Scotland, um, as it was then, um, about it. And a couple of years later, they made an agreement with the local landowner, to, and he cleared um, all the uh, uh, all the gorse. And it was only then that I realised that I had photographed this bit, and actually the chamber's up there. I couldn't see it. It was so heavily overgrown by uh, all sorts of accretion. Uh, and gosh. So this is how it looked in 2012 or so that photograph was taken. It was cleared in uh, about 2010. You can see some of the, the uh, gosh is growing up in the, in the background there and the chamber itself is a bit of a mess. So the um, story moves on and many of you will recognize that lady, that's uh, Susan Cruz. Um, of Arch, um, and I had become chair of, of Arch by, uh, uh, by that time, and she was leading a number of us on a walk of the chamber cairns that I showed you uh, on the uh, map. And three, the, these three, three uh, happened to be on uh, this walk, and it finished at, uh, at Carn Glass, and we three were standing around saying, what a mess, what are we going to do about it? And that's how this project uh, came about. Um, we decided that we would have a go uh, by approaching a uh, monument um, and this was our very simple um, project plan that we would uh, we wanted to restore it to how it looked in, uh, after we would have had, had excavated it. We needed landowner permission to clear the gorse again, 
put up a new, uh, some new fencing and some styles so that you could actually get over it. And then, uh, obviously, we needed schedule monument consent to go into the chamber uh, to erect it, uh, one of the stones that uh, had, uh, had fallen, and to put up an interpretation panel. So that was our, our sort of wish. I'm glad to say we got a, a good response from Cara initially and, uh, uh, and others. And um, by the next February, we were already uh, clearing the, the, the care. And this was very much a community project. So we got many people from round about, uh, members of the three, three organizations that uh, uh, were involved in it. And um, uh, this is us standing around the care with uh, Roland somewhere here explaining what the job on hand was. And here's a few of them. Uh, uh, beginning to get rid of a lot of the corn. This is a big trailer with gorse and we filled two of those with uh, uh, just with gorse and other accretive uh, stuff. Uh, and this is what it looked like um, after we had cleared uh, uh, our gorse. And I'll just remind you with uh, the next one I got what that bit looked like. These are the same stones. <clears throat> slightly different angle, but the same pile of, of stones on the side, and that's where, uh, where the chamber was. So, uh, having got that far, this is what it looked like in the early uh, 2015. Um, and by November 2000, sorry, um, 2014, uh, by November 2014, we at last got permission to clear the chamber itself. And uh, we couldn't do that, of course, being amateurs. So uh, these two arrived, Phil and Fiona. I believe Fiona's moved on, but Phil, of course, is still here, somewhere there. Hello, yeah. So they came up to make sure we didn't, uh, you know, find a gold dock and take it home and sell it, um, and uh, showed us how, uh, how to do the care and um, we changed it from that. That's the same photograph as you, you saw before. And this is how it looked once we uh, cleared the chamber. Uh, something entirely, entirely different. And this is the threshold stone that we knew about uh, because you could see it in, in amongst all the accretion, but it clearly had fallen down. There were one of the two other stones that uh, Looked like they needed replaced, but this is the, the particular uh, stone that we were uh, that we were talking about. It had clearly fallen from uh, Tony Woodham's uh, time because it's in Tony Woodham's uh, uh, photograph of standing upright. And the other interesting thing I haven't marked here, but um, I became rather worried about this stone that was clearly uh, suffering frost damage, and there's there's no gap in it <laughs> in uh, Woodham's photograph. Um, it's still like that, I'm just to say, uh, Phil, I was up the other day and uh, it's no wider, <laughs> so uh, um, <clears throat> hopefully it's, uh, it's stopped. Okay, so um, over the next winter, after we cleared the chamber, we, we uh, left it for, uh, for the winter and uh, we started, um, we, we got permission for the interpretation panel on board and uh, we started work on uh, uh, writing up what we would say. Uh, lots of help from Alison Sheridan on, uh, on, on the wording and uh, uh, drawings and so on. Um, we also later that year did a care survey and I haven't got time to tell you uh, um, about that. Um, Phil's got lots of photographs and maps and things so if, you're, if you are interested then uh, um, um, we'll really have time here. But here's uh, Roland uh, trying to peer down this machine to see how it works and here's me standing here waiting for him to find out how it works. <laughs> so, um, and here's Phil, um, probably having his sandwiches up in there. <laughs> and um, anyway, uh, we got permission then to, uh, in around about September 2015, to, uh, to cite the interpretation board. And so we do, duly dug a few holes and popped the legs in, uh, in there and to raise the chamber threshold stone. This is a view from the other direction. This is the top of the headstone looking uh, um, south. And so the, that, the threshold stone that follows now on the left, and there's, the, there's the side stone with uh, the, the, the uh, 
slit in it. So everything was just about ready for grand opening, which we held in October 2015. So we invited, uh, again Susan Cruz um, invited people on a walk as part of the Highland Archaeology uh, Festival, and this is the, them standing around here, um, arriving for, uh, and, and Roland here telling them about the, the site and so on. We had invited uh, three special guests, I suppose you'll recognise Alison and Sheridan here and here. Uh, this is Eric Allen, who's the president of Inverness Art Society, but did some of the drawing for, um, uh, for the interpretation board. And this is Tony Woodham's son, Colin Woodham, who lives fairly local to, uh, to Count Glass, and we knew of, knew of and invited him along uh, for the, uh, for the grand, uh, grand opening. So um, Alison did a, a, a talk um, about the, the, the cairn and its place in the landscape and, and so on. Um, Eric um, unveiled the, the uh, interpretation uh, board panel and Colin Woodham uh, cut the sort of ceremonial tape to formally reopen the restored uh, carbon glass. That photograph became quite popular in the local uh, local press. This is from the Press and Journal, um, and uh, it's the same photograph I've been cutting there. And we got a little bit, bit of publicity here in the major sub headline funding secured from the Dr. Monument. I'm uh, delighted to say. And uh, so we got quite a bit of publicity uh, for, the, uh, for the event. And I'm glad to say part of the project is that the three organisations Arch, North Gessen, History Society and North Scotland Archaeological Society have agreed that we will keep the monument now uh, as, as well as we can in the state uh, uh, where it can be a visitor attraction. And uh, this is a photograph I took last Sunday. Um, so it's, uh, it's looking fine and um, uh, is there for everybody to go uh, and, and see rather than just a, a, a woodland of gorse. Anybody would like to know a bit more? There are two write-ups. One is in, in the, the DES, um, uh, boy, 2016, uh, um, uh, sorry, 2015 um, issue, so uh, that, uh, an article that, that Roland wrote. And just published in Scottish Local History is an article that I wrote um, about uh, the, whole, uh, the whole project. So if you want to, uh, to read more, I actually have a copy of this with me if anybody's interested. Um, and uh, so finally, I just say thank you very much, Adopt the Monument, for helping us to restore Karen Glass. Thank you very much.